Um, so our next speaker is uh, Shaha. Okay, thanks. Um, so uh, this is joint work with Nitzan Uziari, who is here, but preferred uh, uh, not to give this talk. And I'm going to start with a, a general description of the research question, and then I'm going to make it uh, uh, more formal. So uh, in general, we're going to, um, we're going to discuss uh, uh, markets, with, uh, uh, markets with end bidders and uh, one item for sale. And we're going to denote by opt of n the optimal revenue uh, of a truthful mechanism that can be achieved by a truthful mechanism in this uh, end bidder market. And then we're going to think about a situation where the demand for this all TV shrinks, uh, the market gets uh, smaller, one, TV, one bidder leaves the market. Uh, we're going to denote by opt of n minus one the optimal revenue that can be achieved in this small market. And the question that you would like to understand is what is the rev what is the revenue loss uh, due to the market shrinkage? What is the maximum revenue that uh, we, can, we, can we can lose because one bidder uh, leaves the market? Okay, so that's like uh, the general question that you would like to understand. And uh, let's start with thinking about some easy cases. So uh, one easy case is when the values of all bidders are drawn from, some, uh, uh, from the same distribution independently. Uh, so the values are IID. Uh, in this case, it's like an easy exercise to show that the optimal revenue that you can get with n minus 1 bidders is n minus 1 over n times opt of n. Why? Uh, so the mechanism for the market with the n minus 1 bidder is simply, uh, um, uh, is simply to take the optimal mechanism for n bidders, add one phantom bidder, whose value is drawn according to the uh, same distribution as all the others, and then just do whatever the, uh, uh, the optimal mechanism for n bidders is doing. If it happens to sell to the uh, extra phantom bidder, just don't sell the item at all. Okay? Uh, we lost only uh, one over n fraction of the revenue. Um, okay, so uh, this is that. Um, here is another uh, easy case. Now let's go to the other extreme and let's assume that the values are drawn from some uh, joint distribution. Here are some examples for easy cases that are uh, uh, not very interesting. Uh, we might have one bidder that has huge values, say has a value of one million and all the others have values of say approximately one. If this bidder leaves the market, what can you do? You can't extract uh, 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 much of the revenue in this market. Okay, we simply lost it. So that's one case that is not very interesting. Uh, another case that is not very interesting is uh, if uh, the bidder that leaves the market has a lot of information about the other bidders. Is it, so his value is very correlated with the others. So suppose you can just ask him, uh, what is your value? And you know, if he tells us that uh, his value is 1.235 and from that we can deduce the values of all other bidders, then of course when this bidder will, will leave the market, we, we just lose this information and you know, what can we do in this, in this case? Okay. Um, so this is also like a, a, a case that is uh, not very interesting. We simply lose a lot of revenue. So uh, what we want to, what we are going to do is we're going to consider a situation where the values are drawn from some joint distribution. But uh, in our setting, we're going to make sure that uh, uh, the weakest bidder leaves the market. Okay. So what is the weakest bidder? First, we want to make sure that the, this bidder that leaves the market has the smallest value in the in the market. For every realization, the values of all other bidders is strictly bigger than uh, his values. And second, we want to make sure that uh, uh, we don't lose any information because he uh, leaves the market. So we're going to make sure that uh, the value of this bidder is, uh, uh, is constant. Okay? So when this bidder leaves, we don't lose any information about the other bidders because this value is always the same in every realization of the distribution. Okay? So that's the setting. And what we want to understand in is how much do we lose because of this bidder li leaving the market. Um, let me be a bit more form formal about the setting and uh, then I'll state uh, our result. So we're going to consider a situation with one item and n bidders. Uh, values v1 to vn minus 1 are drawn from some distribution f of n minus 1. And in every realization, all the values are strictly bidder than 1. This is going to be uh, the value of the uh, uh, extra n bidder. Uh, we're going to focus on mechanisms that are ex post ir, uh, dominant strategy, private values. Um, in particular, this uh, means that we cannot use uh, results like Kramer and McLean that extracts all revenue from the, uh, uh, for the market for certain distributions, but are not uh, ex post IR. So uh, we focus on ex post individual rationality. 
Um, we're going to say that the opt of n minus 1 is the optimal revenue for n minus 1 bidders when the values are drawn from f of n minus 1. And opt of n is the, uh, the optimal revenue uh, uh, where the values are drawn from f n minus 1. And we have an extra bidder that always has a value of 1. Okay, so that's the setting. And our result said that uh, uh, no matter how large the market is, as long as uh, n is greater than, th than 3, there is a distribution f of n minus 1, such that the ratio between uh, the small market and the big market is e over e plus 1, which is uh, 0 0.731. That is, even if the weakest bidder leaves the market, no matter how big the market is, we lose approximately like 25%. We might lose uh, something like 25% of uh, the profits in this market. Okay? And we'll see that this ratio is tight. This is uh, implied by previous work. Okay? So this is the result. Um, uh, if you want to uh, think about it from an alternative point of view, uh, suppose that the uh, auctioneer has some outside option that is weak in the sense that, you know, if you look at each bidder individually, you can extract from each bidder more revenue than this uh, outside option. But this outside option is actually uh, quite important uh, because it can, you know, really drive the uh, uh, revenue of the auctioneer. Okay? Um, so, um, what is the connection to previous work? Um, it starts with a really beautiful paper of uh, Amir Onen from 2001 that sort of uh, predicted uh, Bayesian algorithmic mechanism, uh, mechanism design and simple versus optimal mechanisms. So, uh, what, uh, what he was interested in is uh, uh, to approximate the optimal auction when the uh, uh, values are drawn from some joint distribution. Uh, by simple mechanisms. The optimal mechanism can be quite complex in this uh, setting. And for that, he suggested to consider the uh, following lookahead uh, mechanism, which is simply the optimal mechanism that is allowed to sell in every instance only to the bidder with the highest value in that instance, or not sell the item at all. Okay? So in every instance, you either sell to the bidder with the highest bid or not sell it at all. An implementation of this, uh, uh, of this uh, auction uh, take the uh, 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 smallest n minus 1 bits, compute the marginal distribution of the additional bidder given the n minus 1 bits and make an, uh, an optimal take it or leave it offer. All right? Um, a natural generalization of the uh, lookahead auction is the k lookahead auction, which is basically the uh, optimal auction that is either allowed to sell to the best, to the highest value k uh, bidders or not sell the item at all. Okay? Um, so uh, this is the k lookahead auction, and uh, why do we like the lookahead auction and the k lookahead auction? So for uh, k equals 1, we know that the lookahead auction extracts for every distribution at least half of the revenue of the optimal mechanism. That can be uh, uh, very complex. And we know that we have a distribution uh, in which we cannot extract more than uh, that fraction. For k equals 2, we also know the answer. Uh, we can extract for every distribution at least a fraction of square root of e uh, over square root of e plus 1, and we cannot extract more than that uh, uh, fraction. Uh, when the markets get larger and larger, uh, uh, we know that we can extract e to the 1 minus 1 over k over e to the 1 minus 1, minus 1 over k plus 1 fraction of the revenue. But uh, the uh, impossibility result is uh, quite weak. Uh, uh, we know that for every k, there is a distribution in which we cannot extract more than k over k plus 2. Okay? So the uh, algorithmic result sort of predicts that uh, uh, you can extract only a constant fraction of the revenue. Well, the impossibility here sort of hints that you know, maybe if we add more and more bidders, we can extract, we can get closer and closer to the optimal revenue. Okay? Uh, in particular, when we exclude uh, only the, uh, uh, the smallest bidder, uh, uh, then we're getting, we're getting really close to the, uh, um, we're getting really close to the optimal revenue. And of course, when uh, k equals n, we simply get the optimal revenue. Now, what our results show is that uh, uh, the actual bound here is e over e plus 1. Notice it is asymptotically tight. If you take k to infinity, you get, uh, in the algorithmic result, you get uh, e over e plus 1. Okay. So, um, um, for, for specific values of case, we still have uh, uh, some gap. Uh, and so this, uh, this shows that, you know, it's not true that the K-Luca reduction gets better and better over time. It gets better and better, but, you know, only by uh, uh, some, small, uh, some small amount. You get stuck by some constant, okay? Even if you, ex ex if you exclude only the weakest bidder that you have. Um, 
Okay, so uh, let me give you uh, an overview of the proof. I, w I won't be able to show uh, all the proof, uh, but just you know uh, uh, the the outline. Uh, so we're going to start with the market with n minus one bidders, and we're going to make that the optimal mechanism on these n minus one bidders is going to have a revenue of uh, e uh, over e minus one. Plus, it's going to have the uh, extra property that the probability that the item is not sold in this optimal uh, mechanism is quite large. It's 1 over uh, e minus 1. Okay? So the optimal mechanism does not allocate the item at all many times. Why is it good? Because this gives us that the uh, optimal mechanism for the large market, uh, uh, as a, so this mechanism has a revenue of at least uh, e plus 1 over e minus 1. Why? We can always simply run the optimal mechanism for n minus 1 bidder. Uh, whenever it sells to one of the uh, small bidder, that's good, and we get an expected revenue of e over uh, e minus 1. Um, whenever it does not allocate the item to one of the uh, n minus 1 bidders, we're simply going to go to the uh, extra additional bidder and se sell the item at a price of 1. Okay, that happens with will be the 1 over e mi minus 1, so we get an additional uh, 1 uh, uh, over e minus 1 for this mechanism. Okay, so this is just one mechanism. Of course, the optimal mechanism is always better than that. And if you take the ratio of opt of n and opt of n minus 1, you get exactly our result. So that's, the, uh, uh, that, that's what we want to construct. And the challenge is to uh, uh, actually do that. So um, uh, the way that uh, uh, we're going to do that is the following. We're going to take, to take bidders 2 to 4 or 2 to n minus 1. And they're all going to have a value of 1 plus some um, extra noise. Okay, 5 epsilon, epsilon, whatever. And this, is, this noise is going to be independent. Uh, the exact way that we uh, set it is actually important, but not for this talk. Okay, so it's uh, bidders 2 to uh, uh, n minus 1 is going to have a value of 1 plus some extra noise. Uh, what about the uh, uh, bidder 1? This bidder is going to have a value that is larger than all the rest. Uh, it's going to be distributed, uh, its value is going to be distributed according to some equal uh, revenue distribution. So we call that an equal revenue distribution is one in which uh, for every take it or leave it offer in the support, you get the same revenue. So uh, the revenue is going to be uh, E over E minus 1. Uh, but the maximum value of this equal revenue distribution uh, is going to be, uh, this is go it's not going to be the same. It's going to be determined by the, this noise of bidders 2 to 4. Okay, so bidders two to four are uh, used in order to uh, uh, to decide which which uh, uh, equal revenue um, which equal revenue distribution the value of bidder one is distributed according to. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, that's the idea. And now, um, what is the uh, uh, what is the optimal mechanism in this uh, setting? It's, uh, it's going to be uh, the following: we're not we're never going to sell the items to bidder two to n minus one. So we're just going to ask them what are their values, okay? According to their values, we're going to calculate the distribution, the distribution according to which bidder one uh, is distributed by, okay? And we're going to make a take it or leave it offer for this bidder at the highest uh, uh, value in its support. Why? Because we want to maximize the probability that uh, we're not going to sell the item. The higher the price is, obviously the chance that we're not going to sell the item, okay? When we're not going to sell the item, we're simply going to uh, go to bidder uh, n and selling the item at a price of uh, 1. Okay. So uh, we get a revenue of e over e minus 1 uh, uh, from bidder 1 plus probability of uh, 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 whatever we uh, haven't sold because we get this revenue from uh, bidder n. Okay. So uh, that's the idea. Um, the... Uh, um, the hard part is to show that uh, when the weak bidder, bidder N, leaves the market, then we lose a lot in the revenue. Okay? So one could potentially think that, you know, maybe if we can just uh, uh, decide that we never sell to, uh, we never use the uh, information of bidder 4, the value of bidder 4, in order to decide the take it or leave it offer to uh, bidder 1, maybe if we can just use the values of, the, use V2 and V3 in order to uh, decide which take it or leave it offer we're going to make to uh, bidder 1. And then if this bidder refuses, we can simply use bidder 4 as our fallback option, okay? And extract some extra information. Maybe this will be uh, uh, good for us. 
But the point is that here we uh, can simply use the fact that you know we're interested in truthful me mechanisms. They have to be monotone. If we sell the item to uh, uh, bidder four at uh, say value one plus five epsilon, we also have to sell him the item when the uh, uh, when his value is one plus six epsilon and so on. Uh, while well, keeping the rest of the values the same. And this means that the uh, 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 offer that we make to uh, bidder one is sometimes going to be uh, smaller than what we need. Okay, because when uh, bidder four increases, uh, increases bid, this means that the, the uh, maximum value of uh, bidder one might get higher and we lose some extra revenue. Okay, um, so that's the idea. Um, let me uh, quickly summarize. What we showed is that the, uh, even a slight decrease in the competition, even if the weakest bidder leaves the market, we might lose uh, 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 quite a lot in the revenue. Um, this gives an asymptotical bound on the performance of the k lookahead option, uh, k lookahead auction, even when uh, k equals n minus 1, even when just uh, we're not allowed to sell only to the uh, uh, bidder with the smallest value in the market. Um, so some often questions, uh, maybe consider more realistic distributions of the uh, extra bidder or some other uh, distributions on the rest of the bidders, what happens when a uh, bidder leaves the market in, that, in these situations. Also, now that we know that the KLUKAID auction does not give us a good approximation ratio, or at least we know uh, uh, the performance of the uh, KLUKAID auction, uh, we still want to approximate the optimal revenue when the values are drawn from some joint distribution uh, uh, using simple mechanisms. So find other simple mechanisms that might uh, uh, perform better than the KLUKAID auction. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. The, the correlation is, uh, yeah, it, it's going, yeah. You have to be very, very careful when you construct that. Yeah. If you remove correlation, you're in the independent case, and you know, yeah. So it works with n equals three, so you don't really need like a num large number of bidders. I mean, but for n equals three, the bound should be either two thirds over e to the two thirds. No, it's uh, no. Oh. Uh, it, it, the result there gets better than this three over two result. We know to do better than three over two. Yeah, so. So the bounds match at e over e plus one as soon as the number. Uh, oh. is, uh, is uh, there. Yeah, for no. If, Sorry, for k equals three, we do we not completely completely match, but uh, it might be possible that for small numbers of uh, uh, small number of bidders, you might be able to do something better than what we do here. But the gap is uh, maybe. I'll just, okay, never mind. Uh, there is some small gap when k is constant. Uh, uh, maybe I'll just show it to you. Like uh, <laughs> it'll be easier. Okay. Okay. So uh, again.